Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm sharing another curry recipe that I have not shared on my channel yet. This one is going to be for squash and chicken curry. If you're all interested to see how I put together this delicious dish, then please keep on watching the video. The first thing that I'm gonna do is start making my curry paste, so this way we can put the curry together. So in a little bowl here, I have some garlic and some hot pepper that I've crushed very well in my mortar and pestle. And on top of that, I'm gonna be going in with my curry powder. I like to use the Lala's brand in the red box. And I'm also gonna be going in with some homemade masala. Every family has their own mix. If you wanna see how I make my own mix at home, then I'll have the recipe linked in the description box down below this video. And all we're gonna do now is add in some water and keep on mixing until we get a nice thick paste. What we're gonna start off by doing is heating up a heavy bottom pot and we're gonna add in some oil to cover the bottom. And once that oil heats up a little bit, you're gonna be going in with some sliced onions. And right on top of those sliced onions, you're also gonna be going in with some chopped scallions or green onions. And you're just gonna saute these until they get a little bit translucent or a little bit golden brown. Once those onions and scallions cook down a bit, you're gonna go in with that curry paste that we just made. And as soon as you go in with that curry paste, you're also gonna go in with the tiniest amount of tomato paste. I like adding in tomato paste whenever I make anything with squash because it really adds a nice flavor. And we're just gonna stir this around and cook it down until those spices are well roasted and well cooked. What I like to do is wait for that oil to re-release from the spice mixture and for it to dry up and stick to the bottom of the pot a little bit. If you wanna ensure that that spice mixture cooks properly and evenly, you can add in a little bit of water at this point. And when all of that water burns off, that's how you'll know that your curry paste is cooked perfectly. Now this is what the curry paste looks like after about two minutes of cooking on a medium medium high heat. As you all can see it looks absolutely amazing. I love that color that it has and it's coming together. It just needs to cook down a little bit more. And whenever I make any type of curry dish I always like to season my curry paste because it always adds a better flavor to the entire curry. So I'm going in with a little bit of black pepper and I'm also going to be going in with a good amount of salt. And after a total of six minutes of cooking you're going to see that this mixture starts to stick a little bit at the bottom all the oil starts to release and it is nice and dry. So at this point, we're gonna be going in with all of our chopped chicken. Now this is regular chicken from the grocery store that we chopped up into pieces. It is a whole chicken and I took off all of the skin and all of the fat. Personally, when I make chicken curry, I don't like the skin in there because when the skin cooks, it's very mushy and almost slimy and I do not like that texture at all. If you like to leave the skin on, feel free to do so though. And all I'm gonna do now at this point is I'm gonna stir this around with all the spices and I'm gonna continue to let it cook down for about 15 minutes or until that chicken releases all of its natural juices and those juices dry up. What we're doing here is classically known as bunging the chicken down. After about eight minutes, this is what my chicken looks like. As you all can see, it released a lot of water. It had a lot of natural juices on it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep on letting it bubble on a high heat until all of those juices reduce and the chicken starts to sear and get nice and golden brown. So it's been a total of about 15 minutes and as you all can see that gravy or the juices around the chicken have dried up substantially. It started to stick on the bottom a little bit and it is dry for the most part. It is a very thick sauce clinging to the chicken. So at this point, we're gonna go in with our chopped squash. Now this is the big green, light green colored squash with the hard skin. If you don't have this on hand, you can use zucchini. You just have to peel it and chop it up into fine pieces. And the reason why my squash looks like this is because we had cut it, washed it, and put it in the freezer so this way it could be easy cooking for later on. And once you add in that squash, you're gonna stir it around and you're gonna let this cook down for about another five to six minutes or until the squash starts to cook down a little bit. You never wanna add in water right away as soon as you add stuff in or else it's not gonna come together properly. And I saved a couple pieces of my sliced onions from earlier and I'm just gonna add that in now. I love adding some in in the beginning and of course in towards the ending or the middle of the process just because I love the flavor that it adds. It adds a little bit of a fresher flavor to the entire cart. So I can see that my squash is pretty wet and it's gonna be releasing a lot of water. So I don't need to add in any water into my pot. I'm just gonna cover it, reduce this to a medium, medium low heat and I'm gonna allow it to cook down until it looks like this right here. As you all can see, this squash is cooked down to perfection. It's a lot of water in there. I did not add in any. That came from the chicken and the squash itself. But this is what you want your final curry to look like. You want that squash to cook down very well, you, so this way it can make a nice thick gravy. You do not want any big chunks of squash left over. And of course, you want that chicken to still be intact. You don't want to overcook it and start letting it fall apart. At this point, I'm gonna turn off my stove and it is ready to serve. Today, I'm serving my squash and chicken curry with sada roti. I love anything with squash with sada roti. It just makes sense to me. But if you wanted to serve it with oil roti, dal puri, cassava roti, even fried bake or even rice and dal and rice, whatever the choice is, it will taste amazing. I highly recommend that if you've never made squash and chicken curry, you give it a try because it is such a quick, 
meal to make, especially if you want Guyanese food on a weeknight. So if you enjoyed this video today, please go ahead and give it a nice big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you are not subscribed yet. Make sure you come on over and join the Matthews Guyanese Cooking family. And of course, drop those comments down below and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye everyone.